uh, Ms. Coleman, Strunk, is saying that he always told me it was impossible to see the data. All right? and, and he shows an email, uh, which I have, and I have copies of other emails from him that are much that are ambiguous, and I think this one was even somewhat ambiguous. But that's April 2004. A month after that supposedly occurred, in May of 2004, there's a quote at a conference, a public conference, uh, which is the Future of Music, which is a big conference. This is available on the web. And Jim Griffin, who's well known in music circle, circle says, Coleman, why won't you share the numbers? We're both on the panel together. And I'm complaining that Coleman's not making his data available. And here's what Coleman says. I was all for opening it up, but our university lawyers won't let us make it available. All right? As soon as these lawsuits, because that's what he's sort of talking about, the legal environment quiets down, everything will be given out. Now, if you heard that, would you think that he's going to give the data out someday? Is that an unreasonable thing to assume? I don't think so. At any rate, then uh, they now claim something they didn't claim earlier, and they didn't claim in an earlier email, that they have a confidentiality agreement with OpenNAP. Now, one of the things is I think OpenNAP does not exist anymore. It's long gone. I presume I should ask the lawyers in the room, when you have a confidentiality agreement with somebody that doesn't exist anymore, do you still have to uphold it? I don't know. I presume that you don't, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, but then he was asked to show a copy by the reporters doing the story, and they would not do it. Okay, My guess is there was no such. I don't know this for sure, but that's my guess. No such thing. Okay, so that's... The, the, those are the papers that say that there's no decline in the file sharing. All right, now, are all the, gem, all the papers that I showed you on that list saying the file sharing causes harm, are they all gems? No, they're not all gems. They have problems, too. All right, but they don't have a result as crazy as the Canadian study that you can sort of throw out upon first examining what it is. And they don't seem to have the problems that Obahosa against Trump have, either. So, yes, some of them have problems, but they're not quite... Certainly no worse than these. All right, so to finish up so that we still have time for questions, uh, the last thing I want to talk about is, okay, so we know things are bad for the record industry. All right, and I'm suggesting it's due to piracy. What should we do about it? Now, the people who write these articles sort of agree that it's due to piracy, and they want to be helpful to the industry. And so they come up with suggestions. Um, one of the suggestions is, well, you can't monetize selling music anymore because everyone's taking it. And they're not paying, and you can't make them pay. So you have to find things that are hard to pirate and try to monetize those. All right, well, that's true if you can find things that are not easily pirated, that have sufficient value, you might try selling those. Uh, the problem is it's hard to come up with exactly what those would be. Um, Sometimes, some, there are some theoretical models which claim that they can figure out how to turn P2P around so that piracy on its own disappears. I'll mention those in a late, later slide. Um, and those models are sort of crazier models than most. All right? they, they, they assume that uh, the respondents are going to act in a way that's hard to believe they would. Uh, that's the, those models. Uh, a little naive. All right. Their hearts are the right place, but a little naive. Uh, so here's the people who say we should, that the industry should move to uh, you know, other products like T-shirts and autographs and whatnot. Um, the, if there was a good substitute that could generate similar levels of revenue, that would be a useful thing to switch over to. The one that's usually mentioned, actually, is, uh, is concerts. All right. Concerts do generate revenue. Uh, Record companies, from my understanding, are beginning to enter into what are called 360 contracts, where they're trying to share a piece of the concert revenues. Uh, but it's not a first-best solution. Concert revenues were always there. If it was most efficient to be giving away music, for example, and paying, getting something from the artist for the concert revenues, that's what they would have done. That would be an efficient model. If that's an efficient model, that's presumably what they would have done before. Somebody would have found it in the previous decades of selling music. The fact that they didn't do that meant it's an inferior model. Um, and therefore, it may, it may be something that generates some revenue, but it's not, you know, it's only a second best, and it may or may not be a good second best. 
I don't claim to know that. All right, so that's, that's to try to take concert revenues. Um, then there's the t-shirts and autographs. Well, I'm not an expert in this industry. I don't know how much money they generate on t-search and autographs and whatnot. But I find it hard to believe they generate any, anything near what they would get from selling CDs. So I don't think the money is there to be able to generate very much from that other product that's harder to pirate. All right. um, then there's the let's give music away and rely on advertising. Advertising is a model that has existed in, in, in different forms, in different ways. Uh, certainly television was advertising based. Radio is advertising based. Radio plays music. Maybe somehow the recording industry should own radio. Because right now, when radio plays music, they don't pay anything to the recording industry for that. Um, and when radio does this, they have commercials that interrupt the music usually. And when television does it, they really interrupt the program. And they are interrupted at the very worst time because that's when the commercial tends to be worst the most. It's common sense. So in order to have uh, advertising generate as much revenue as it might, you have to have um, some sort of system where it's playing music and then interrupting and forcing people to listen to the ads and then going back to the music, sort of the way radio has done it. The problem is we already have radio, so and it doesn't pay really anything to the, for the recordings. How is it that we can have the record companies sort of create their own radio and, and generate sufficient revenues? And now it is true that radio revenues are quite large, but it's not the revenues. It's, it's got to be sort of the net of the cost of the radio. You need to cover all the costs of what record companies normally do, which is finding talent and nurturing talent and promoting the groups and whatnot. Uh, so it's unclear that they're going to be able to find the money to do that uh, in radio. Uh, one possibility would be is if they can use the internet, kill off radio, make the internet radio, replace that, and generate all the revenues for themselves and have the record companies own the radio stations but on the internet. But I don't know how they do that. You know, that's not something that is naturally going to happen. Um, that would at least generate some revenues. Um, and of course, radio actually has been in a slump since 2004, even though it did go up last year. All right, so there may be something here. Advertising is a method, but I presume that's also probably a, a bad second best. All right. And then we have the models that I think are sort of the craziest the ones that the picture actually are representing. Uh, and these are theorists, and I, I, I am in a building, I'm in a business school with many, some of them. All right? And you know, they're, they're just running their models and, and trying to solve the world's problems. Uh, and uh, they have models, and I've seen several of them, where file shares are going to be converted from non-paying to paying. And the way you convert them is to give them a piece of the music when it's sold downstream. So you're the first one to buy the music over the internet or download it, file share, but you, you agree to buy it because then if someone buys it from you, you'll get some of their money. All right. Yes, this is a giant pyramid scheme where the people at the end wind up paying and getting nothing, never figuring out. This is like going to last for a long time. Uh, and everyone is worse off on average. Because they're getting it for free if they engage in piracy. And under this system, they're paying something for it. Probably not very much, but they're paying something. Are users really going to switch away from the system that lets them get it free to a system that makes them collectively uh, worse off, and on average, worse off? Uh, I, don't see, I, I don't see this possibly working. All right. But the IS, people love it. Uh, so at any rate, uh, that's pretty much it. I have one final slide and then we'll have questions and answers. All right. The one thing that I think is most clear is piracy does have a negative impact on file sharing, which shouldn't be too much of a surprise. That's right. I never even got into talking about sampling, but we're out of time anyway, so that's, that's fine. Uh, does econometrics add anything to our knowledge? Uh, my guess would be not really. All right. um, if you're not in the music business, as long as you have a job somewhere else, it might be, you might be happy to not be in a declining business. Um, if you're in the software, book, video, or other information industry, you should be looking at your future, figuring out how you can avoid what's been going on in the music business. And the music business needs to see if there's some way to keep um, file sharing from causing the harm. 
right? And that would require actually figuring out a way to reducing piracy on the internet, something that it seems as a society we're particularly reluctant to do. So that's, that's the talk. Go ahead and uh, raise your hand and... Uh, okay, I'll try it over there. You, you had a, a, a chart twice with uh, five country revenues. Yeah, you want me to go back? You mean they, 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 have the sm they have the smallest declines, is what you're saying? No, not like that. They look like the real numbers. Japan looks like it's way, way ahead of anywhere else. All right, let's see. It's uh, we're almost there. Let's see. No, I guess I'm going the wrong way. It's like the U.S. was five and Japan was one hundred and fifty. Okay, here we go. I mean, the, U, the Japan is at 26%. The UK is at 37%. Uh, it's the real numbers. Oh. It's, 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 it's the oh, no. Those are in their local currencies. Those are yen. You can't compare them. These, these are in order of size. The US is by far the biggest size. All right. So this is their local currency. Corrected for inflation, not turned into dollars. Yeah. Well... No, it says adjusted for 2009, and what I meant by the dollar sign was currencies, but I couldn't fit it in there. All right? So Japanese really don't buy 50 No, no, they don't. They don't. They don't. They're number two. Okay. We had a go in order, which I think the hands went up. Tom. Well, I assume some people make the argument that notwithstanding the decline in sales, People make that argument. That, that is absolutely right. Uh, and on a static analysis, when you're not taking any account of any possible gains, there are, yes, and, and it's always the case in a static analysis here where you don't have any impact on the production, allowing more consumers in always makes things better off. And so, yes, that, that's true. They point that out. Uh, their claim is that even if you might include the dynamic, Maybe they'd still be better off, but that's just a guess because nobody really knows those numbers. Yeah, Adam. Um, Sam, I, I was really impressed with your, your GDP chart um, because you have a similar event trend I expect to be using that, which is starting in 2003, 2004, with the new sales from well, I mean, video, video sales. Um, it's not that steep. Well, but it's a start. And I'm, you know, oh, is that due to piracy? Well, it's because yeah. 2000, but first in time, 2000, 2004. Start to get broadband, starting to get mass distribution of broadband, and now availability of that. And everyone can find out how broadband is what's now made piracy. Now, that, that, that's true. You might start saying, well, this is the beginning of piracy for DVDs. Mm -hmm. The problem is that the last two years are the recession. It's a big recession. We don't know how much of this is due to the recession and how much isn't. So that only gives us really two and a half, three years. If, when the recession's over, it's still going down, then I think that there's right. some pretty good. That's right. Okay, now I've lost the order again. So I'll just sort of go left to right. Okay, go ahead. Just a quick comment on that. I think that you can see that, though, in, in your music slide about kids going home for the summer. I'd be interested to see how that um, compares with propagation of broadband at home. Okay, but kids don't go home. Well, they do go home for the summer, right. but it wasn't showing up in the... So in that's what I'm saying. It, right. The first year it did, but then it didn't. In subsequent years, it was after the first broadband. No, that, not enough change there. It was just, it's just random fluctuation. Um, the... <laughs> You know, why it went down the first year is not entirely clear. Uh, it's big champagne data. It's not even clear whether it's that accurate. Um, but that was the data that they used to draw their conclusion that there's a summer effect, a seasonality effect. And my point is when two of the three seasons don't work, you don't have seasonality. So, you know, if one Christmas out of five had sales go up, you couldn't say, well, we have this big seasonality where every Christmas sales go up. It's, it's just that the evidence doesn't support it. That's all I was trying to say there. Uh, the broadband's been growing year by year, and I have data and some kind of metrics looking at that at various points. I'm not sure that looking at the big champagne data would add much to it. All right. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the back. Haven't, haven't been to the back. 